Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning. Right now at 5, dozens are still stranded this morning, trapped by the Creek Fire as the blaze doubles in size. The latest on efforts by military pilots to get the trapped hikers and campers out overnight. And power companies are warning customers of potential blackouts in the face of surging temperatures and looming wildfire risks. Who could be affected coming up? Plus, the former elementary school principal convicted of killing her husband is rushed from jail to the hospital overnight. What we're learning from officials on this Tuesday, September 8, 2020. Good morning. Good to have you with us. I'm Maddie Jansen. It is 5 a.m. along with Taylor Schaub, who is in for Alex Fisher this morning. And we want to begin with those wildfires. Dozens of people remain trapped by the Creek Fire this morning. It's burning in the Sierra National Forest. The Fresno Fire Department says military pilots tried to rescue the stranded hikers, campers and residents in China Peak and Lake Edison overnight. But the smoke was too heavy to land. Thousands of acres are burning up and down the state with record heat and dry conditions fueling the flame. It is burning on both sides of the San Joaquin River near Mammoth Pool and the communities of Shaver Lake, Big Creek and Huntington Lake. And that is just one of more than 20 fires burning throughout the state. East of Los Angeles, the El Dorado fire has claimed more than 11,000 square miles. It's currently 7% contained. Authorities say that fire started Saturday, triggered by a pyrotechnic device used at a gender reveal party. And the Valley Fire burning east of San Diego went from 10 to 10,000 acres in just a few days. It's now more than 17,000 acres. This as the Bobcat Fire in the Angeles Forest has burned more than 4,800 acres. Fire crews say record-breaking heat and dry conditions are not helping. I just want to emphasize our number one priority for this fire is the protection of life and property. The situation that we have right now uh, is a life-threatening situation with the weather forecast that we have for the next three days. A record heat wave across much of our state has made that terrain ideal for wildfires. By one estimate, wildfires have charred more than 2 million acres of California landscape so far this year. All right, now we're taking a look at the forecast and what we can expect today. Are we going to finally cool it down a little bit, Kev? We are going to start to cool down a little bit, but we also have some winds that we're expecting to pick up uh, as we go throughout today. Let's take a look at the latest uh, temperature for the Creek Fire, and this is out near Shaver Lake. 57 degrees, a two point at 44, 61% on the humidity, and right now the winds in the area out of the northeast at about five miles per hour. Here's a map, and this shows you exactly where the fire is and where it is growing. Shaver Lake and the fire has been burning in a northerly direction. Huntington Lake just to, to the east of that. And uh, here's the very latest and 135,000 plus acres have burned zero containment as of right now. Over 976 personnel on the fire, seven helicopters battling this in the air, 117 engines and uh, 11 dozers. There's a lot of personnel fighting this fire and it will continue today. Here's the forecast. Heavy smoke in the area. Temperature right around 85 degrees, depending on where uh, firefighters will be on the lines. Winds out of the north 25 to 30. That is going to be a problem this afternoon. And we could be looking at wind gusts near 45 miles per hour and the red flag warning in place until 11 o'clock tonight. So firefighting efforts are going to be hampered by this red flag warning. Uh, well, here at home yesterday, we got lucky uh, with the smoke around the area. We were not able to get as much sunshine through everything. So that kind of helped us out in terms of the temperatures. But today uh, we'll bring it back even maybe a little bit more near 100. Here's a look at the hour by hour forecast and we're going to be right near 100 this afternoon and then for the mountains will rise into the upper 70s by 9 a.m. and then 80s this afternoon. I'll have much more in your pinpoint forecast. That's coming up in just a little bit. Well, thanks, Kevin. Pacific Gas and Electric is warning that current customers could see outages beginning this afternoon and lasting until tomorrow morning in an effort to reduce fire risk. The shutoff is expected to impact 172,000 customers in portions of 22 counties, including Kern. It's done based on the forecast for gusty winds and severely dry conditions that could create a critical fire risk. According to PG&E, Kern County could have their power cut off starting this afternoon. That shutoff would affect some homes and businesses in Bakersfield and communities south of Bakersfield along I-5 near the Grapevine Lake Lebec. PG&E estimates power shutoffs would be or power would be restored around 7 p.m. tomorrow. 
the utility says that you should enter your address on pgealerts.com to see if you could lose your power. Southern California Edison says its customers should also watch out for outages. The utility says people in Bear Valley Springs could also have their power cut off. If that happens, the company says the outage may last until Thursday. So they're asking people to be prepared. If you have any questions, you can call SoCal Edison at 1-800-611-1911. And due to the poor air quality from all of these fires, Golden Empire Transit is offering free bus rides again today. You can get a ride the get fixed routes and get a lift all day free of charge. Funding for these rides comes free from the Congestion Mitigation Air Quality Grant. 506 is your time now. A man's dead after a woman lost control of her vehicle and hit him while he was standing in a center median. It happened around 745 last night in the 500 block of Union Avenue. According to Bakersfield Police, a woman lost control of her car that was headed south on Union and hit the man. The vehicle kept going and crashed into a business. The man was pronounced dead at the scene. Police say speed appears to be a factor in the crash, but not drugs or alcohol. If you have information on this crash, crash call BPD at 327-7111. In your 17 Crime Watch now, a man and a woman were arrested on suspicion of trying to kill two people in a drive-by shooting. That shooting happened on Friday on only Saul Street. That's near the corner of White Lane and Hughes. Police say two suspects drove by the area and fired several shots at a Toyota Camry in the neighborhood. Two men were hit and taken to the hospital, but they are expected to survive. Yesterday, police announced Carla Fanning and Peter Collins were arrested in the shooting. They're both facing attempted murder and gang-related charges. And talk about right place, right time, as police stumbled upon an attempted carjacking in progress in East Bakersfield. Police say early Sunday morning, officers saw a man trying to force a woman out of her car near Martin Luther King Jr. Park on Owen Street. They were ch there were children inside the car at the time. When BPT tried to stop him, he took off running. After a short chase, officers were able to catch him on California Avenue near King Street. They arrested 24-year-old Miguel Valduvinos on several charges. And now to the latest on the coronavirus crisis here in Kern. Yesterday, Kern Public Health reported 99 new cases and no new deaths. That brings the total to more than 30,000 cases since the pandemic began. More than 13,000 people have an active case of the virus and are recovering at home. Another 13,000 have already made a full recovery. 167 are isolated in the hospital right now. 296 people have died from the virus since March. And new results from an NBC survey monkey poll shows a near even split in how Americans view the effects of the virus when it comes to whether they see it as more of a public health crisis, an economic crisis, 52% of the nearly 36,000 respondents questioned say they think it's more of a public health crisis. 47% said they're more concerned about the economy. The remaining percent did not answer the question. Houching Community Blood Bank is joining forces with the city of Tehachapi to help in the battle against COVID-19. They're holding a blood drive today in Tehachapi. The blood bank is also looking for people to donate whole blood and platelets. It's from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. at West, the West Park parking lot. That's at 490 West D Street. Donors will receive a COVID-19 antibody test for free. You can save time by going online to hcbb.com and making an appointment there. You can also fill out the donor questionnaire ahead of time. The Guild House will reopen today, but they're doing business a little differently this month. Due to COVID-19, it will be outdoor dining and takeout only. Guildhouse serves food to raise money for mental health and substance abuse services for local kids, adults, and families. Again, the Guildhouse will reopen today with outdoor dining and takeout. They'll be open Tuesday through Thursdays, 1130 to 130. You can call the number on your screen for reservations. It's 325-5478. And you can find the Guildhouse on the corner of 18th and F Streets in downtown Bakersfield. Such a beautiful building. Yeah, and really good food, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's tremendous. Looking forward to that. All volunteer made and served everything. Absolutely. It's really cool. KGET Business Watch is brought to you by Grapevine MSP Technology Services, the Valley's leading IT service provider. All right, in your 17 Business Watch, Amazon bans the sale of foreign seeds amid a mailing mystery. Amazon announcing the move on its Seller Central site, which states, quote, plants 
Plant products and seeds may not be imported from outside the United States. The change comes after unsolicited seeds were mailed to thousands of Americans over the summer, with most coming from China. The U.S. Department of Agriculture in July warned people not to plant the seeds due to feared fears over potential invasive species of plants and diseases that could harm gardens and crops. The Transportation Security Administration reported big numbers for air travel over the holiday weekend, with travelers seemingly ignoring health experts' warnings to avoid large crowds on beaches and parties. Whitney Wilde explains. As summer winds down, air travel is taking off. The Transportation Security Administration processed nearly 1 million passengers Friday. That number marks a high point by pandemic era standards, but is still dramatically lower than the 2.2 million travelers who hit the skies a year ago. Airlines are going the extra mile to make passengers feel safe. They've really enhanced the sanitization of aircraft in between flights. The, the ventilation Ventilation systems on the aircraft, it's probably better air than you're breathing uh, in a supermarket. Despite warnings from health officials, Labor Day weekend brought parties and crowds. In San Francisco, a parking lot near Ocean City Beach closed after around 1,000 people flooded the area for a virtual celebration of the famed festival Burning Man. From California to Georgia, sunbathers hit the sand. In any of the stores, you go in, you have to wear a mask. I figured I'd get out of town, socially distance, and enjoy the beach. Health officials say fall could usher in a new wave of coronavirus cases. As experts watch the photos and videos from Labor Day, they hope soaking up the last of summer doesn't lead to spikes in viral spread. People's willingness to comply with the simple things that we know can reduce spread is going to start to fray as we head into the fall and the winter, and that's another challenge, trying to keep up our vigilance. I'm Whitney Wilde reporting. Now, in entertainment news, Bruce Williamson, former lead singer of The Temptations, has died from coronavirus. The 49-year-old died Sunday evening at Mountain View Hospital in Las Vegas, according to his business manager. Williamson was with The Temptations for nearly 10 years, having replaced G.C. Cameron in the legendary Motown group. The Temptations sold tens of millions of albums with hits like My Girl and Get Ready. Williamson left the group in 2015 to focus on soul and gospel music. The cast of The Princess Bride is getting political. They'll be raising money for the Democratic Party of Wisconsin with a script read of the 1987 cult classic. People who donate will get an invite to a live stream of the performance. Among those involved include Billy Crystal, Carrie Yules, Robin Wright, and Carol Kane. Director Rob Rainer is also taking part in the reunion. After the performance, the cast will hold a Q&A session, which will be moderated by Patton Oswalt. One person who's upset with the script read? Senator Ted Cruz. The Republican from Texas, a longtime fan of The Princess Bride, says he would prefer the crew avoid, quote, Hollywood politics. Well, 17 News is your local elections headquarters. Vaccines, coronavirus relief, and a new book out today from President Trump's former lawyer. There's a lot to talk about in Washington as Congress comes back. Tracy Ponce has reaction, plus more from the campaign trail. Hi, Taylor. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. The Senate's back today. The House is back next week, but there's still no indication that anything has changed with that COVID relief bill that's been stuck in Congress since July. They don't want to make a deal. The Senate returns today with coronavirus relief, money for schools, direct payments to Americans, all still in limbo. President Trump refuses to meet with Democrats. I am taking the high road. I'm taking the high road by not seeing them. That's the high road. Yeah. And, you, thank you, President David. and if I thought it made a difference or would make a difference, I'd do it in a minute. He's claiming a coronavirus vaccine could happen as early as next month. Even the doctor running President Trump's program to fast track a vaccine says that's extremely unlikely. If I could get a vaccine tomorrow, I'd do it. If it cost me the election, I'd do it. It's a political rhetoric. That's all it is, just for politics. The World Health Organization says don't expect a vaccine until the middle of next year, but do expect a reaction to a new book by former Trump lawyer Michael Cohen. He describes the president as a cult leader. While I was in the cult, I was really refusing to acknowledge that the actions that I was performing for my boss were morally wrong. Disloyal hit store shelves today. The White House calls the book fan fiction by a disgraced felon. I'm Tracy Potts, 17 News.
In other national news, the Oregon State Patrol is reporting two people were arrested after violent protests outside the state capital of Salem. It started with a caravan of cars waving flags and honking horns promoted by a Facebook group called Oregon for Trump 2020. The violence took place yesterday during an American Lives Matter rally as about 150 pro-Trump supporters faced off against 50 counter-protesters. Projectiles were thrown and paintballs were fired into the crowd. This comes after a Trump supporter was shot and killed in downtown Portland on August 29th after a clash with police brutality protesters. Here at home and in our 17 follow-up file, we're expecting an update from officials today after Leslie Chance, the former school principal convicted of killing her husband, was rushed from Lirdo Jail to a local hospital. The sheriff's office says the 53-year-old Chance suffered a medical emergency Saturday but is alive and is receiving treatment. The official refused to say whether the emergency re resulted from a suicide attempt. Leslie Chance was convicted in January of first-degree murder for the shooting death of her husband, Todd Chance. She faces 50 years to life in prison at her sentencing hearing next week. Chance was the principal of Fairview Elementary School at the time of the shooting. Ten local families are picking up the pieces after a fire destroyed and damaged their homes. I came right away to see what was going on, and I just couldn't believe, like, I'm still... I still can't believe that everything's just gone and my parents were in so much danger, you know? Leslie Ponce had just moved out of her mother's apartment weeks ago, returning now to see the damage done after flames tore through four units in the complex on Larkus Avenue early yesterday morning, forcing residents of another 10 units onto the streets. Just two days prior, a separate fire caused major damage to a home on Quincy Street. Five people were displaced there. Red Cross has stepped in to help families get back on their feet. GoFundMe accounts have also been set up to help the families affected by the fires. Visit KGET.com cl and click on this story for links to those GoFundMes. An immigrants' rights group is demanding action today as it continues to work to try to block the creation of two new ICE immigration detention centers in McFarland. In recent months, the private detention company Geo Group has been trying to bring two new ICE detention centers to the city of McFarland. There's been a lot of back and forth with an injunction blocking Geo Group and now an appeal. The Immigrant Legal Resource Center claims the city of McFarland disregarded community input when it first allowed this project to move forward. Today at the Kern County Courthouse, there's a hearing regarding a separate but similar issue. Advocates are hoping to pack the court to bring attention to McFarland's plight. What you showed me uh, was an example of um, a flyer that uh, folks are creating to get the word out so that individuals know about this germane hearing that's coming up on this issue so that if folks do want to participate. Immigration advocates say this ICE expansion is an attempt to undercut the law and ignores the demands of McFarland residents. We reached out to Geo Group. They've not responded as of news time, but in the past the company has said the new detention centers would provide much needed jobs for McFarland. Welcome back with some sports news now. Organizers of this year's French Open say they will allow crowds in the stands, despite the rising number of COVID cases in France. The Grand Slam event was originally scheduled for May of this year, but was postponed due to the pandemic. The French Tennis Federation says stands will be split into three zones, a maximum of 5,000 fans allowed in two of the zones and 1,500 allowed in the third. Audience members over the age of 11 will be required to wear facial coverings. The qualifying rounds late this month will be played behind closed doors. Organizers say all players will be tested upon arrival to Paris and then continue with routine testing as they remain in contention. France currently has the seventh highest number of fatalities caused by the coronavirus pandemic worldwide, with more than 30,000. Well, what's it like to try to make a putt worth $15 million? Evidently, the pros make it look easy. Most of us would probably be shaking as we lined up a putt worth $15 million. But Dustin Johnson made it look easy yesterday, and he rolled in the birdie to finish in style. In all fairness, he did win by three strokes, but still, talk about cashing in. The $15 million is the payday for winning the season-ending PG&A Tour Championship. Johnson won't have long to celebrate. The U.S. Open starts in 10 days right here on NBC.
I missed a putt the other day for five dollars. So, <laughs> <laughs> the 124th Boston Marathon was postponed due to the pandemic and ultimately canceled. But registered participants were still invited to run the 26.2 miles in neighborhoods in Boston instead of the course itself. Dozens ran the distance yesterday, crossing the famous finish line. Running the actual course was discouraged and roads were not closed to vehicle traffic. And while they traded in medals for masks this year, the thrill of victory was still there. Organizers provided registered participants with an app that allowed for spectator tracking, a downloadable bib, and printable winner's break tape. Runners still have until September 14th to complete the virtual marathon. There's still time, Taylor. There's still time. <laughs> I told you. I heard you're going for a record. <laughs> I told you during the break, I don't think I have ever run more than a mile and a half in a row. So I, I got a little way to work myself there. There's always next year. Always next year. <laughs> Welcome back. It's 5.53. In your health watch this morning, an important reminder for parents as we head into flu season, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends kids get their flu vaccine before the end of October. The flu shot can be given as young as six months old, and the nasal spray is appropriate for healthy children who are two and up. Experts say vaccination is extremely important because many hospitals and emergency services are already at capacity due to coronavirus. Typically, 80% of children who die from flu are not vaccinated. And a new Italian study suggests probiotics could help combat childhood obesity. Researchers assigned 100 obese children to a calorie-controlled diet along with probiotics or a placebo. Eight weeks later, the probiotic group lost more weight and had improved insulin sensitivity than those on a diet only. Some sobering new statistics on drugged driving. A new survey from Mothers Against Drunk Driving shows many Americans don't realize the dangers of driving under the influence of marijuana. A quarter of respondents said driving after using pot is not too concerning or not at all concerning. And while 31 percent of parents said they talk to their kids about drunk driving often, nearly half never discuss the dangers of driving high. Call it a side effect of the coronavirus pandemic. Cancer screenings are down, and that includes mammograms, which can help catch breast cancer early when it's more easily treated. Sarah Dolliff has the story. Everything going well. As Americans catch up on missed appointments from doctor's visits to the dentist to hair salons, health experts are reminding women not to forget mammograms. Prioritize your self-care, prioritize your health care and go ahead and reschedule your mammogram. A survey this summer by medical technology company Hologic found more than a quarter of women plan to either skip or delay their annual screenings this year. And the consequences could be serious. The National Cancer Institute estimates there could be 10,000 additional breast and colorectal deaths over the next decade as a result of missed screenings and delayed diagnoses and treatment. I've had many patients who've had early um, breast cancer diagnosed with a routine uh, mammogram. I'm good. A routine mammogram caught musician Cheryl Crow's stage one breast cancer in 2006, screening she's glad she got. Would it have been stage two in six months? It's possible, in which case uh, my treatment would have been changed from a lumpectomy and radiation to perhaps chemotherapy or something more drastic. And with health care centers taking additional precautions against the spread of COVID-19, including masks, stepped-up cleanings, and spaced appointments to minimize contact between patients, the Grammy winner is encouraging women to reschedule missed mammograms or keep upcoming appointments. So until we have a cure, this is our greatest weapon. Aiming to catch breast cancer early and save lives. Sarah Dolliff, NBC News. Now to the latest on the coronavirus pandemic. With a new NBC survey monkey poll, results revealing Americans are split on viewing the pandemic as primarily a public health crisis or an economic crisis. 52% say they think of it as more of a public health crisis, while 47% say they're more concerned about the economy. The remaining percent didn't answer the question. And Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.